In this lecture, you'll learn about our first option for inter-VLAN routing, which is to use a router with separate interfaces acting as the default gateway for each of the different VLANs. Before we get into the inter-VLAN routing, a quick review. There's typically a one-to-one -one relationship between an IP subnet and a VLAN in the LAN campus. For example, we'll have engineering hosts in IP subnet 10.10.10.0 slash 24, and that will be associated with VLAN 10. And then we've got a different IP subnet for sales of 10.10.20.0 slash 24, but it's also going to have its own associated VLAN, VLAN 20, for example. Hosts are segregated at layer 3 by being in different IP subnets, and they're segregated at layer 2 into separate broadcast domains by being in different VLANs. So hosts in different IP subnets need to send traffic via a router to be able to communicate with each other. So in the last section, you saw how to do all of the layer 2 VLAN configuration, but hosts in different VLANs weren't able to communicate with each other so let's look at how to fix that. So first option, a router with separate physical interfaces in each VLAN. So here we have got the Eng VLAN PCs there represented by the purple color and our sales PCs are yellow. So on the switch, we've configured our access ports to put the correct host into the correct VLAN. Then we're adding a router now as well. In the example, the router interface Fast Ethernet 0 slash 1 is going to be the default gateway for the engineering VLAN. So we give it an IP address in the same subnet, 10.10.10.1 in that example here, and we configure our engineering hosts to use 10.10.10.1 as their default gateway. On the switch, it's interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 1 that is connected to that interface on the router, so we put that in the engineering VLAN. So that's the engineering side done. We also need to configure the sales side as well. So we're using interface fast 0 slash 2 on the router as the default gateway there. IP address 10.10.20.1 and on the switch it's interface fast ethernet 0 slash 2 on the other side of the link. We configure that as an access port in VLAN 20 for sales. In our example I'm also going to show you how you do the external routing as well. So here we've got interface fast 0 slash 3 on the router, which is connected out to the wide area network. It's got IP address 203.0.113.1, and the next hop address over on the wide area network side is going to be 203.0.113.2. So I'll configure a static default route pointing to 203.0.113.2 as the next hop address. So let's have a look and see how to do the actual configuration. So on our router, we've got interface fast ethernet 0 slash 1, IP address 10.10.10.1 with a slash 24 subnet mask. Remember to do a no shutdown as well. And interface fast ethernet 0 slash 2, the IP address on there is 10.10.20.1. And then our default static route to get out of the local area network, IP route 0.0.0.0. .0, .0, .0, .0 0.0.0.0 with a next hop address of 203.0.113.2. So that's the router config. We need to make sure we put a matching config on the switch as well. So on the switch, I've got interface fast ethernet 0 slash 1, switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 10 for the engineering VLAN. And interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 2, switch port mode access, and switch port access VLAN 20 for sales. So when you use the option of router with separate interfaces for different VLANs, the configuration on the switch is just like it was a normal end host, a normal PC that was plugged into that port. Now, some disadvantages exist with using a router with separate interfaces. You need a separate physical interface for every VLAN. So unless you've got very few VLANs, 
it's likely that you're going to run out of available physical interfaces on the router. Also, traffic being routed between different IP subnets within the campus has to go up and down physical Ethernet cables to the router. You'll see when we get to option 3 using a layer 3 switch, it's slower sending it up and down the physical cables than routing it across the back plane of the switch. That'll make more sense when you see option 3. Okay, so that's all the information about our first option. Next up, let's configure it in the lab. So you can see the topology diagram here. It's the same setup we were using in the VLAN section. So I've got my switch one and switch three, which I've got some engineering and sales PCs attached. Eng VLAN is 10, the sales VLAN is VLAN 20. The difference is that we've now added our router R1, which is connected into switch 2. Fast 0 slash 0 is going to be configured as the engineering gateway with 10.10.10.1. It connects to fast 01 on the switch. And fast 0 slash 1 on the router will be the sales gateway at 10.10.20.1. The switch interface on the other side is fast 0 slash 2. I've already configured all the layer 2 VLAN and configuration so we've got trunks going end to end from switch one to switch three and i've put the pcs into the correct vlan let's just verify that first so i'll go on to switch one and if i do a show interface gig zero slash one switch port you can see that that is configured as a trunk we're using VLAN 199 as the native VLAN. Show VLAN brief. I can see that I've got my ENG and my sales VLANs configured and the PCs have been put into the correct access ports as well. Let's check that connectivity works. So I'll go on to ENG 1. I'll ping 10.10.10.11 which is ENG2, which is connected to the same switch, and ping 10.10.10.12, that is ENG3 over on switch 3 on the far end. So our layer 2 configuration is all up and working, but if I try to ping a sales PC, so I'll try to ping 10.10.20.12, which is on the same switch, this is going to fail because I haven't configured my routing yet, and obviously if I ping 10.10.20.10 .10 on switch 3, that's going to fail as well. Okay, so layer 2, all good. Let's configure our layer 3 routing now. So I'll do the router first. So I need to go on to R1. So let me just open up Packet Tracer here and connect to R1. And at the command line, I need to configure my interface for my engineering VLAN. So I'll go to global config, and that was interface fast 0 slash 0. IP address would be 10.10.10.1, 255.255.255.0, and no shutdown. And interface fast 0 slash 1 for the sales VLAN, IP address 10.10.20.1 with a slash 24 mask and no shutdown. That's all I need to do on the router. I need to configure the switch with a matching configuration. So it's connected to switch 2. And in global config, it's interface fast 0 slash 1, which is connected to the engineering VLAN interface. So I'll make that switch port mode access and switch port access VLAN 10. And then interface fast 0 slash 2 for sales. I'll hit the up arrow to get switch port mode access and set that to switch port access VLAN 20. So that's it, that should be my inter VLAN routing working now. Let's go back onto my ENG1 PC. If I do an IP config, you can see it is set for 10.10.10.1 as the default gateway. And hopefully if all the interfaces have come up, if I ping 10.10.20.12 on the same switch, 
Okay, it looks like the ping is going to fail. Probably just a packet tracer quirk again here. Let's check and see if our interfaces are up on the router. So on R1, I'll do a show IP interface brief. And the interfaces are up, up. Let's also check the switch. Well, it should be fine on the switch. If there was a problem on the switch, it would show up here on the router as well. But let's just double check. Show IP interface brief. And it was fast 0 slash 1 and 2. They're up, up as well. Let's try the ping again, because maybe it just took a minute. Oh, there we go. As you can see, it was the last ping that came through. So everything was fine. That is our inter VLAN routing working. And I can ping to the sales PC over on the other side of the network on the other switch. That's at 10.10.20.10. .10. This might drop a few pings while it's doing ARP and stuff like that as well. There we go. We can see we get a reply there too. And I know this is going to work for sure, but let's just double check. Let's also go into our sales PC and check that it can ping across to end. So let's make this 10.10.10.11 now and wait for the ARP to resolve. And then hopefully, there we go, the second ping works. Okay, so that's how we configure interview and routing using a router with separate interfaces. See you in the next lecture for the next option.